Thank you for tuning in to Auto E Clinic. My name is Aaron. This is Michael. What we have in the shop today, we have a 2005 Chrysler Town & Country van. Came in to us for a P0420 code, which we later diagnosed and found out it was a catalytic converter. And we've guided you through the diagnostic steps. We talked about the parts, labor issue of it. Now, video three or part three, we're actually going to show you how to replace this catalytic converter. So what do you say we hop on it, Mike? Let's do it. All right. The first step we're going to do to replace the converter is go ahead and drop down the exhaust. We're going to remove it from the rubber mounts and drop it down, and we're going to set it right here on this transmission jack. A lot of times it helps to lube these up a little bit first. Go ahead and jack this up and set it against the exhaust. Okay. Now. Now we can get to our bolt here where it connects. Looks like a 15 millimeter. Okay, clamps loose. Now we're gonna see if we can't beat it off the pipe. Oh my, he knows that how to these pipes. Okay. You wanna go ahead and disconnect your O2 sensor? And we'll get our four bolts off up there, look like 13 millimeters. And we we'll have to hold that one. Hmm. Got our bolts broke loose, just about all of them. Go ahead and zip them the rest of the way out. Okay, we're going back with an aftermarket converter. As you can see, we have the original laid out and we have the aftermarket. The original is a one piece design from the flange, converter, and into the pipe where it goes into the muffler. The aftermarket piece we have, we have the converter, which the flange is the same. We've got the O2 sensor hole, and it's a two-piece. We have this pipe here. You always want to double check and make sure that everything looks like it's going to fit, shape the same, same length measurements and everything. So looks like we've got a great fit, so let's get this thing on there. We went ahead and got new bolts. For the price of new bolts versus playing with the old ones, it was well worth it well worth it because it's going to go in a lot quicker and a lot better with the new bolts plus they're not rusty it's going to take a long time if we do have any problems with it it'll come back off easy for the reason it's just a lot better to go ahead and get new bolts and as you can see we're going to go and swap out the O2 sensor there's stories I've heard of people cleaning them you can do that but it's not any kind of permanent fix it'll just get you by and if the customer's going to need an O2 sensor that's best to go ahead and replace it that way we can give them a warranty with it so now we're ready to go back on. We're going to put the, the Kelly converter on first, get it bolted up, and then bolt the pipe up. If you want to look at the new Kelly converter, the top two holes are slotted. Now we can go ahead and put the top two bolts in, leave them loose fitted, and go ahead and put the uh, new gasket on, and that'll make it a lot easier to install this Kelly converter. Top two bolts will already be in. We can mesh it up in there, and then put our two bottom bolts in. Should be quick and easy to install. Okay, now we should be able to slide the new converter up in there pretty easily. And, yes, all right. Okay. 
install our pipe. You want to get your clamp about center of the fitting from where the catalytic converter goes into the pipe. In this case, we want to get it about center there, that we can get a good, a good clamp. You'll see it pipe start to squeeze, and at that point, you know you got it tight enough. Looks good. Go ahead and plug in our O2 sensor. Got the rest of the exhaust on. It was a pain in the butt. I hate exhaust work, but it's done. Now I guess we need to crank it up, lower the vehicle, crank it up, and raise it back up to make sure we have no exhaust leaks. Now we're testing the new catalytic converter. This is our O2 sensor before the catalytic converter. This is our O2 sensor after the catalytic converter. Now you can see the bank one sensor went before the catalytic converter. See the fluctuation that we had before. And now this is after the catalytic converter, and you see no fluctuation. We're staying steady at 0.86 millivolts versus before the catalytic converter, we're fluctuating. Fluctuating almost a full volt. Now we can go into a different graph, we can merge the graphs, and you can see we're staying steady at 0.86 versus we're fluctuating almost a full volt over here. And that's where it should be. You want your, your O2 sensor after the catalytic converter to stay steady. It should not fluctuate, because the, the, the catalytic converter should burn what the engine does not. And if it's doing its job properly, then you should have a steady O2 sensor after the catalytic converter. We can go to another graph where it separates the two. And you can see we're just staying between 0 0.084 and 0 0.086 after the catalytic converter. And before we're fluctuating 0 0.20 up to 0 0.80. So that's six tenths of a volt. But once again, that's what we had before, so we knew that was fine. It was the one after the catalytic converter that was wrong. Once again, you can see right there we had a bad catalytic converter. And even there, just looking at your analog text data, you're seeing that it, it's fluctuating and it's staying steady. So we know right there, we know we fixed it. Now we'll check for any exhaust leaks. Of course, the new exhaust is always going to smoke. But um, I don't hear any exhaust leaks, which is great. Follow it all the way back. Here's our last fitting. No exhaust leaks. Okay, that was a, a good diagnostic and repair. The vehicle is fixed.